Well, we're in about the uh, third week in May, getting ready to, uh, as we close in on the Bonneville Speed Week, which is, for us, it's going to be August 5th through the 8th. There's a few things that you have to do. They give you a checklist on the motorcycles that they're, they're going to do a tech inspection. There's about 30, eh, about 40 things, I don't know, 40 something things on the checklist that have to be done, depending on the bike. So, we're going to go over those things, the check, checklist today, and make sure everybody's a gets assigned you know who's assigned to what so we're not we don't miss something probably about 11 of those things uh, on the checklist uh, we don't have to do anything about because they're already done you know like gas caps and stuff like that your controls you just can't have broken controls or anything like that so really there's not anything that you have to do with those and I, I did a checklist and I marked those in uh, those in orange they're already done there are some things that we don't have to do because we're not a supercharged bike or something like that so there's another six or seven of those Man, about six so uh, of those on the checklist I think that I'm going to be responsible for at least eight of them and then plus uh, things like the compressor and the canopy and the tarp and the trailer and the generator and things like that those are things I, I'll be I'll be responsible for some other things that Jeff and Bill have to decide as you know they're gonna have to do their now there's about 19 things uh, on their list that they need to divide up and figure out who's doing what um, and when they're gonna get them done some things on the checklist would be better to get done before others things like we're changing tires so safety wiring could probably be done after that not before that or you could drill the holes but you don't want to go to all the effort to safety wire everything then have to break it loose when you change the tires those, those sorts of things uh, you have to know it's, it's really hard to do those things once you get there because there's no there's no resources out there you're out in the middle of nowhere you know they got a town uh, Wendover but it's I think it's got a auto auto place and some restaurants and the big casinos but not a lot of stuff you can get from a casino for a motorcycle is there <laughs> so we'll go over those today and make sure we know when those going to get done and they're going to get done and yeah, if Jeff wants to Jeff's the owner of the bike he wants to bring it over to my house and we can do it at my house that'd be fine or we gonna take it to Mr. Bill's house that'd be fine too because his wife's going to have to park our Civic outside so I'm, I don't suspect that's going to be number one on the list of things to do we can put it up on my left uh, I got room for that uh, but now you know I sold the monkey. The monkey is gone. And the Royal Enfield's still up for sale. I've got it parked in my garage with my car. So it's so we have some more room out in my shop to put things. Especially to take the saddlebags off of this tiger. It gets kind of wide with these saddlebags. Tune back in uh, a little later. Maybe we can see, uh, get these things divided out, get them done. I'd like to get everything done by the last 
June 30th. It gives you a solid month to figure out things that didn't work and you couldn't get done, get those things done. So, you know, shoot for June 30th for having everything done. Then if you get any surprises, you have time to deal with the surprises. So when you go out of Bonneville, it's just everything that can happen bad usually does. You know, it's just, this is the way it is. You know, somebody goes out there and makes a perfect run. It, chances are, you make about 50 runs, you might have one where everything went perfect. The, the course, the rider, and the bike. But more, more often than not, something, you know, happens. The wind's blowing and blows you sideways. I heard people miss shifts. I try not to. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the bikes just, you know, some days they run better than they do on other days, you know. Some days the density of the altitude is 5,000 feet. Some days the density of the altitude is 7,200 feet. So it's very difficult to get a, a perfect run which everything just went just right. Then, for the records, you need to have two runs. So, generally one of the runs is not going to be as good as the other one because it's, you know, maybe you did a little, something else happened that prevented you from having the, that really good run, you know. There's a there's a wind that hits you out at the, at the two mile point, you know, on windy days. And it's a big cross, quartering crosswind. So it can really throw you off your spot. You know, if you got a good spot, you're running down the track, you know, and everything's really good. And you don't want to move from that because the salt's good there, that the wind blows you three or four feet, then you're off the spot and you have to decide whether uh, running where you're running is costing you more speed than it would be to try to get back to the spot. As you understand, every time you go against the wind, even a side wind, it costs you speed. So, most of the time, <coughs> you don't want to have to fight, fight the wind. Every time you fight the wind, you lose a mile an hour or two. We had to figure out where we're going to put the GoPros on this. <laughs> Rocket 3 so they don't blow off. Not wearing one on my helmet. I tried that with a ZX1400R once. It had 175 miles an hour plus. Uh, it kind of bends on your neck a lot. So definitely not going to have one. If you put it on the center here, you're tucking down you you sometimes you can't see anything anyway only reason I'd have a camera there would be maybe to let me know the RPMs and things like that with the rocket 3 you've got you got a lot more torque and a lot more power you got a lot more RPMs to go you know on the thruxton R I'm pretty much at uh, probably about 7,000 RPMs depending on how I got the bike geared So I'm only going to get about another 400 RPMs out of it from mile one to mile three With the with a rocket three I'll probably be about 5,600 RPMs And normal I think red lines what six something but you know, you figure that some of that RPM you're getting here is wheel spin also. So you're losing a little bit, you know, a couple hundred RPM off a of wheel spin, even at mile two. Um, but but you still yet you got another 1400, at least 1400 RPMs to run um, after mile one. Versus I'm pretty much tapped out on the Thruxton R. You know, I can pick up 12 miles an hour, but, you know, but this thing, if I can run 152 on the, on the Thruxton, why, why couldn't I run a little faster than that on the Rocket 3?
Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.